right let's take this super store okay today's session is about calculated fields or the formulas first let's understand what this calculated fields calculated fields means a field which actually is derived by writing a formula all the fields that you see here these are all actually extracted that is imported i have got these fields by taking it from the tables but what is a calculated field it is nothing but deriving one more field that is by using these fields by writing a formula how can we create a calculated field i'll show you there are different ways where you can create this i'll show you all the ways so that it will be easy for you to understand many ways you can create the calculated field one way is i have a small arrow here let me click on this here i have this create calculated field i'll click here I'll get one window to create the calculated field. Let me close this. Otherwise, I'll go to this analysis, and here I have this create calculated field. If I click here, then I can create this calculated field. Or I can directly go on any of these columns, right click, and say here create calculated field. If I directly take from a field and say create Uh, my data of uh, the calculated field i'll get the field name directly here otherwise we will not get that field name we have to type let's go with a very simple example and slowly we will learn more functions how to start this calculated field what we'll do is let me go here say create calculated field i'll get this window here let's understand what is this window here this is the field name i can specify the field name here here i can write this place what we have here i can write the formula here i can say apply and say okay if everything is fine once i finish this formula i can say okay otherwise if you still want to have some help on this formula or any other uh, you know uh, section so I'll, let me just click here i'll get this part is a help section here i'll get all the functions in Tab, see, they are listed now. Suppose if you want to go for a particular category and then learn, see, I'll click on number. Now all the number functions will be available. Or if I go here, string. These are all for text functions. And here the advantage is I can have the examples also here. See, with explanation, I'll get the example. So here, see. If you don't want the self section, you can just click on this arrow mark. So I'll get only this. Window. Now, how to start writing my calculated field? So, what I'll do is here, I'll try to type a name that is a calculated field name. I'll use function. Say, concat. There is no function called as concatenate, so here we have to do it manually. When I'm taking a field name, that is the field name what we already have. What I have to do is I have to type that name. Let's say, for example, I'll combine region and state. So what I'll do here, I'll say region. Now don't leave it as you say. Use tab. See, I should have a square bracket in the beginning, then field name, then square bracket. Don't do like this. This is wrong. Can I say this? It says the calculation contains error. So this actually will show me the error message. So what I should do, the best and the uh, the best practice or better way is just type a few characters of that field and then use tab. Now here, unlike in Excel, in Excel what we have, we put and symbol and we'll try to concatenate or merge the values. Now I don't want to merge uh, by, by using and, so we cannot use and here. So for that, what I have to use plus. In Tableau, we need to use plus. Let's say I want to have space. Double quote space and I'll say plus and here let's say state. See tab. Now if you see the message, it says the calculation is valid. That means the message what we have here. It, if it says the calculation is valid, that means the formula what I've written is perfect. Let me say okay. 
if I say OK, a new field has been created here and you can see here it says equals ABC. ABC is a data type that is string and equals ABC is nothing but it is a data type of string and if it mentions equals that means it is a calculated field. So wherever if you see equals here this equals that means it is a calculated field. It can be of any data type but if I have this equal symbol then that means it is a calculated field. Now this field works similar to your other fields as well. There is no difference in that. Let me just drag this and if I put it here, see, I'll get the state where I have this region and the state. It is combined. Now let me remove this. I want to edit this. Right click on the field, say edit. Now let's say I want to put one hyphen here. Let's put one hyphen and say OK. Done. Let me drag this and I'll put it here. Now I'll get hyphen. This is how you'll start writing or say creating your calculated field. So you can write any formulas. I showed you so many formulas here. So like this, we can create a formula here and that will become a calculated field. Now let's see how we can convert <coughs> the text into uppercase and lowercase. Let's take this customer name. I'll put it here. I have the customer names with different cases. I want to convert this into uppercase. So what I'll do is I'll go here. Now I am actually writing a, a formula on a particular field. So what you can do directly, you can say right click and then create calculated field. Now I'll go here and I'll say function lower. Let's make it as lowercase. Here I'll say lower of use tab and then I'll put a bracket here. Now if you see it says calculation is valid. Now I'll say OK. When I say OK, I see here it says function lower. Let me drag this and I'll put it here. See, it becomes lowercase. I want to convert this into uppercase. Right click. Create. Calculated field. Say function upper. I'll say upper of this field. Let me say OK. Now I'll drag this and I'll put it here. See, it will get converted into uppercase. So this uppercase and lowercase, what it will do is it will just convert the cases, that is from lowercase to uppercase. We don't have proper case like what we have in Excel. Next, I want to extract the data. Let's say I'll take this order ID. I want to separate this country code, then year, and this will say order code. I want to separate these three. So for this, what I can do is I have functions called as left, mid, and right. What this left will do is it will extract the leftmost characters, the number of uh, you know characters I'm mentioning only that will be extracted right it will extract the data from right side with the number of characters I have mentioned mid will give me the number of characters from the starting position where I need to extract the data let's work on this we can go here right click and I'll say create calculated field again I'm telling you you can either go here and say calculated field or go to analysis and say calculated field or you can directly go here, right click and take it from the field. Okay. Any three options are fine. Now I've taken this here. I'll say function and I'll say left. Left top and I'll right. See. Comma number of characters. Let's say two. So left top this field comma I want the two characters from there say okay let me drag this and I'll put it here see 
I got this C. Let me take the last six characters. I want the last six characters. So what I'll do is I'll show you in this way. See, now I'm not taken the field. I'm going here. Here I'll say function write. The write of it lasts for string. The string is nothing but the field name. I'll say order ID. See, if I'm not taking from this field, I have to type here. Comma, it lasts for number of characters. I'll say six. Let me say okay. I got this right. Take this and put it here. See, I'll get this six characters. Fine. Next, I want this middle four characters. That is here. What I'll do, I'll go here. Create calculated field. Say function underscore and say mid mid of it lasts for string. I'll say order id comma now it lasts for starting number and the number of characters starting number let's say one two three four from fourth character i want four characters that means i have the field here in that from fourth character i want four characters i'll say okay see take this and i'll put it here see so i extracted the left two characters, number eight six characters, and middle four characters. This is for extracting the data. But the same thing I can do in one more function, which is called a split. What the split will do is it will help me in extracting the data, but based on the delimiter. What is delimiter? Let's understand that. I'll take this order ID, and if you check this, I have hyphen here. A character which will separate the data is called as delimiter. In this case, the delimiter is hyphen. In some case, it will be comma. Some case, you know, it will be of different characters. Since here we have this delimiter as hyphen, so what I'll do is I'll use this split and try to split split the data by using this hyphen. Go calculated field. We'll say function split. Split. Just observe this. It lasts for this string. String is nothing but the field name. I'll say order ID, comma. See, it is asking for the delimiter. We understood that the delimiter is hyphen. I'll put hyphen, comma. It lasts for the token number. Token number means when I'm actually using this hyphen. Say this will be the first token number, second, third, and goes on if we have more hyphens. Let's say I want this first. Part this one, the first two characters. I'll say one. That is token number one. Say okay. Now let me take this split and I'll put it here. See, I'll get first two characters. Let's type once again. Say function split and I'll make it as two split order id comma delimiter is hyphen comma it lasts for the token number i will say three now or if you want two anything say okay now if i drag this and if i put it here three let me edit this right click edit i'll make it as three and say okay let me take this and put it here see i'll get the last token Tokens are nothing but the separated values by these delimiters. I'll show you one more example. Let me take this customer name with a different delimiter. Here I have the delimiter space. Let's say I want to get the first name. So what I'll do? I'll go here, create field, then I'll say first name. Say Split it lasts for the string. I'll say customer name, comma delimiter. Now it is space, comma. I'll say one. Say okay. Now let me take this first name and I'll put it here. See, I'll get the first name. So likewise, you can actually um, split the columns or say the data, whatever we have, depending on the delimiter. Fine.
So that is split. Next we have find. Find means I want to find a character. It can be any character. Let's say I take this customer name itself and I'll try to find the space position in this. Calculated field function find. Find it lasts for this string. String again, anywhere if you see this string, there is nothing but the column name. So here I'm taking customer name, take this comma. Now it's asking for substring. Substring means what is the character I'm looking for. Let's say I'm looking for space. And I'll say so. Now just observe this. Listen carefully. I'm taking this function find. I have this space here. I'll drag this and I'll pull it here. Fine. According to this, one, two, three, four, five, six. It should be six. The answer should be <coughs> six. But here it says 36. Why? Because people will get confused thinking that my answer should have been six, but here I'm getting 36. This Aaron Bergman is actually repeating six times. So what is happening is here it is taking as six, 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 six times and it is giving me 36. The number of times it is repeating what it is doing is here. I've mentioned it as I've taken this. So what will happen in a drag and drop? This will become aggregated. So it is saying sum of whatever value I'm getting. So in this case, though it was supposed to be six, it is aggregating and it is becoming 36. But how to get the value that is the uh, right value? For that, what I should do is I will go here, click here. Here it says measure wherein it will take the aggregated values, convert this into attribute. Now I'm getting this six or say wherever it is. So here. When I convert this into attribute, it will not aggregate the values. It will give me the right values. If I'm aggregating it, what will happen? The number of times this Aaron Bergman is actually repeating, those many times it is getting added. But keep in mind, this attribute will work only when we have similar values. That means this Aaron Bergman is repeating six times and all the values have got six as the values. That is similar values. Then only if I say attribute, here I'll get the value. I'll show you in coming sessions how this attribute will uh, you know, get a star mark here if it is not a similar values. Fine. Next, this is find. Let me show you one more example. Find nth. What this find nth will do is now let me take this customer name again. And here, let's go and check somewhere we have a say. A is repeating multiple times here. Yeah. I want to find the position, say for example, uh, A in third position where it is. First, let's use this find. I'll create a function. Find, I'll say A. Find, it lasts for string, I'll say customer name, comma. I'm trying to find string A, I'll say two. Now, if I take this, and if I put it here and let me change this to attribute, see, A is in first position because in the beginning itself it is taking and it is giving me the value. Now I want to find the third, say one, two, and here I have this third, the third position of A, the third A, where is it? So for that, what I have to do is I'll be using find nth, say, function find n find nth means i'll be specifying the occurrence same options here say customer name comma at last for substring let's say a i want to find the third occurrence let's say so i'll take this customer name and then i'll take this find n and then convert this into Attribute. See, it is saying 12. That means 
say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The third position of A is in 12th position. That means the nth, I can specify a one third, second, or first, or whatever. But by default, it will be 1 when I use find. So here, I have this find nth, which will help me in finding the position of the nth occurrence I am mentioning in the function. This is fine. Next is len. I want to find the number of characters. Let's say I'll take this. I want to find the number of characters in this name. Take this calculated field function len. Len now customer name. That's all. Say OK. And now let me take this and I'll try the tenth root here. It says 78. Again, here it is getting aggregated. So what will I do? Same thing. I'll say attribute. Here this will get converted into attribute values, not aggregate values. Now I'll get 13. That means the total number of characters in this name is 13 characters and it goes on with all the other characters. This is length. So find will give me the position of the character what I'm trying to find. Find nth will give me the position, but by the occurrence, length will give me the number of characters in the uh, field or say in the string what I've selected. Fine. Next, we have something called a starts with, ends with, and contains. What this will do? Let's go back. In the previous session, we saw this, uh, say filters with, let's take this, show you. In the previous session, we saw this wildcard contains, starts with, and ends with. This is one way of filtering the data. Or I can do the same thing by using formula as well. I'll go and I'll say create calculated field here function starts with. Say starts with. It lasts for the string. Let's say customer name. And I want all the customer name which starts with S. The substring, you can see this. Read the parameters. A string is nothing but the customer name. Substring, I'll say S. I'll say OK. Let me take this customer name and then I'll take this starts with and I'll put it here. It will give me true or false. And if you see the data type here, it says T slash F, that is true or false. It is called as Boolean operator. But how will I filter this? Say, take this, I'll put it here. It lasts for true or false now. If I select true and say OK, see, wherever it is S, I'm getting the data filter. Next, let me take out. I want ends with function ends with ends with. I want all the character, I mean, uh, the customer name where it is ending with ES. Customer name, comma, it lasts for substring. I'll say ES and say OK. Let me see again. This also will be true or false. Let's take it. Either I can take it here, here it says true or false. Wherever I can see true, see, it is true, it says ES. Or I can put this in filters and here it's a true or false. Say OK. See. All the names what you see here will have ES. Contains. Contains means the data can be anywhere. The data what I'm specifying, the substring what I'm specifying can be anywhere in the name. Let's take calculated field function underscore and say contains. Contains. It lasts for string. I'll say customer name, comma. It lasts for substring. I'll say a r e. This is a substring. What I'm actually trying to search in this customer name. I'll say okay. Take this. I'll put it in this filter directly. It lasts for true or false. I'll say true. I'll say okay. See a r e. Where well, see go here. See a r e here, and here also have this a r e. This is for starts with, 
ends with and ends. So to easily remember what I've done is I've just categorized it so that it will be easy to remember. Say so here, this is for changing the case. This is for extracting the data. This is for splitting the data. This is for finding the characters. This is to get the length. And here starts, ends, contains will tell me whether the character is in the beginning or in the end or whether it contains. Next, we have trim. This is trim, L trim, and R trim. This trim function actually is used to remove the unwanted spaces. Trim will remove the unwanted spaces completely in that field. L trim will remove the unwanted spaces from left side. R trim will remove the spaces from right side. I'm not sure whether we have uh, any column like that, but I'll just take this customer and I'll uh, show you how to use this function. Function trim the trim customer name. So no other parameter, just the string. I'll go here. Since I don't have any spaces here, so I'm not sure whether uh, you know uh, it will give me any other kind of results. It will be same results because here there is no spaces. But you can use like this say trim of this. Similarly, you can use this L trim and R trim. I'll just show you. But if you have any fields like this, go and try where you have extra spaces. This will work. The function L trim say L trim. At last for string, I'll say customer name. Say okay. And let me finish this R trim as well. So function R trim. Then customer name. Say okay. Let's take this. So here it will be same result because there is no extra spaces here. So if you have any columns like that in your data, please try that. The string will remove extra spaces. That's all. But in Excel, we don't have this R trim and L trim. Only trim we have here. We have an option of R trim and L trim. That is to remove spaces from right side or from left side. So next is we have replace. Replace is nothing but if I have a character, I want to replace that. Let me take this order ID and I'll put it here. If you see, I have this hyphen. I want this hyphen to be slash. Click here, calculated field, function, replace. Say replace. It lasts for string. I'll take this order ID now. Comma. It lasts for substring. Substring means what is the character I'm replacing? What is the character I'm replacing from this field? Say hyphen. That is old text. Comma. Replacement or this hyphen, what is that I'm trying to replace? Say slash. I want the slash here. Say okay. Take this and put it here. See, the hyphen has been replaced by slash. These are some of the text functions, commonly used text functions, what I have in tab. Next. I have this date function. Date functions are very uh, no, no, minimal. There are not uh, many functions here, but they are very easy to remember as well. I'll tell you. Let's say I have a date. I want to extract day, month, and year. Let's go here. I will take the date here and I'll put it here. I will take this. I'll make it let's date. Let's make exact date and then I'll make it discrete so that I'll get the label. So discrete means it will give me the label or say it will give me just the exact date what I have. I want to extract a day, month, and year of this order date what I have. So what I'll do is I'll take this field, say function day. Just mention day of. I have this 
date, I'll mention this order date and say OK. Now again, observe this. I'll take this and I'll put it here. See, here it says 3, that is fine. But if you see here, this date, whatever is there, it is 3, it is coming here 4, it is becoming 12. That means the date 1, 4, 2015, it is repeating 3 times. Again, this is getting aggregated. I will try to remove that and go here and I will say attribute. See, now I am getting that result properly. So, wherever you don't want the aggregation should not happen, convert that into attribute. But again, I am telling you this attribute will not work if they are not similar. Fine. I took the day. Let's try to extract month. Calculated field function month month of it lasts for date and say order date let's say okay let's drag this month and i'll put it here and i'll convert this into attribute right if you say this month like this see it says one forget about the format I'll uh, discuss this formatting the next session. See, it says one. One means January. So if you go here, see nine. I'll get these values. If this was a measure with some, see, it says two forty. That means twelve into say twenty four or something, whatever. So twelve into um, some some value, say twenty or something, is coming as two forty. So if I make it as attribute, this will become twelve. I want to extract year function year say year of order day mm -hmm. say okay let me take this I'll put it here see it says year if you can observe this see this thing this is two no or 2015 it is fine here it's saying 6045 that is because it is getting aggregated let me go here and I'll say attribute now I'll get the right. Right. This is what we have to extract day, month, and year from a date. Now, what if I have day, month, and year in a separate column? The so day, month, year in a separate column itself. I want to convert that into date. Then what I'll do is go here. Say so I have a function called as make date. Make date. See. It lasts for year, month, and day. Just now we extracted the, you know, the year, month, and the day. We'll use the same column, same field, say function, year. Okay, this is what we just extracted. So I can use the calculated field itself as a uh, parameter for another calculated field, month. I use this function, month, comma, function, day. See? If I have year, month and day in a separate column, I can use this make date and I can create a date out of it. Say, okay, see, I got this date. Now let me, you can see this. Here I have this date icon, equals date. That means I've created a calculated field and the data type is date. Let me extract this and I'll put it here. Now let me say exact date so that I'll get all the dates and convert this into discrete. See, you want to can take this order date and compare Let's say that date. It will take some time because a lot of data are there. And then I'll convert this into disk. See, you can compare. It's the same date because we have extracted day, month, and year from order date itself. And then we combined it to create one more column here, that is one more field here. Right? This is make date. Now, next we have date difference and date add. This date add, what it will do is it will add the intervals. Intervals means, so for example, I have a day, means I have a date here. I want to add 10 days for that. I'll use, say, 10. That means I'm mentioning it here as day. If I mention month, that means 10 months are added here. If I mention year, then it will add 10 years here. So the interval, whatever, 
I am specifying those many number of days, month or year will be added to this order date. I will show you. The next date difference, what it will do is, it is similar to that. Whether I want the difference in day, month or year, I have to specify the first date and the last date. We will see how it works. Date add to here function date add. We will take the date, the order date. Say date and it lasts for date part. Date part is nothing but whether it is day, month, or year. I'll say day, comma. It lasts for interval. Interval means how many days I need to add. Let's say I want to add 10 days. It lasts for the date. I'll say order date and say okay. Let me take this order date and I'll put it here. And convert this into exact date. Where is that? We use this function date add. I take this and I put it here. Let's do the same thing. The exact date. <coughs> it's time to convert to date. Then we'll convert this into discrete. Convert this into discrete. And if you go here, see 1 3 2015, it says 1 3 1 13 2015. So 1 4 it is 14. So if you go here, 10 days have been added to every date here. See? So okay, see here, it says 29 6 2015. 10 days added, it is going to next one that is 9 7 2015. This is for date add. Suppose if I give month, the number of months will be added. If I give year, the number of years will be added. So depending on your requirement, say whether I need to add a month, day, or year, I can specify the, the, the you know the date part and I can get the values here. This is date add. A date difference. Date difference means from one day to another date, how many days are there, how many months are there, how many years are there. So here I'll say create calculated field year will mention function date diff date diff it lasts for date part same thing i'll go here and say day i put a single quote <coughs> comma start date i'll say order date comma it lasts for the end date i'll say end date will take it as shift date we have one more field called as shift date and I'll say okay. Now let's take this and I'll put it here. We'll take shift it as well so that we can compare it. Exact date. Since we have almost 9994 records, it will take some time to convert. So once it is converted, we we'll go here and say make it discrete. See from January 3rd, 2015 to 7th January 2015, it is four days. So likewise, it goes on. See here it says it should be four days. It is saying 12 because same record it is repeating three times. I'll go here and make it discrete. So make it attribute. Now I'll get the exact date. That means this is the difference. The difference between two days, whether it is day, month, or year. If I give month, then this will give me the difference between the number of months by this two days. Okay. So this is for date diff and date add. Now let's say I want the date name. I have a date, but I want the name of that particular um, uh, month of that year. So what I'll do. I'll go here and take this. Let me have this order date here like this. And I'll say function date name. Just say date name. It lasts for date part. Let's say month. And then comma order date. 
let's say okay then let me drag it and i'll put it here see it will give me the name of that particular one fine suppose if you want today's date i can go here and say function today today no parameters like in excel what we have similar to that it will give me today's date just drag it and put it here i'll make it exact date and then convert that into <clears throat> this crate which will give me the labels see today is 26 4 2020 same thing if you want now that is the current time then i can use now function underscore now say now open bracket close bracket let me take this and put it here then say <clears throat> we can change the format or the timings as well this it will give me the current time so you can remove this you can eliminate this time um, sorry this date by formatting so formatting itself is a separate session i'll explain when we come to this formatting now just concentrate on the functions these are the date functions what we have the date functions okay see here so again i've categorized it so that it will be easy for you to remember next one is very important that is the aggregate functions aggregate means what it is combining so let's go and understand here what will happen is let's say i will take the subcategory and i'll put it here now let me take the sales value and if i put it here see it is getting aggregated that is sum now i want to do this through code oh, sorry through um, uh, a calculated field or a formula so how to do this so what we'll do is we have some functions say some average minimum maximum and count which is used for aggregate calculation let me go here and say calculated field i'll say function underscore sum sum of and we'll mention it as sales say okay now just drag this and put it here see here i'm getting this total let me take this sales and i'll put this as well see i'm getting both the same results but see the field here it says sum of sales and here it says aggregate of this function this aggregated function both are giving me same results but what is the advantage of this creating a function that i'll tell you in the coming formulas let me remove this now if you want average i'll go here say function average say avg then i'll use the sales say okay and then let me take this average and i'll put it here this will give me the average minimum value means within this subcategory i want the minimum value so here say sub function underscore min min of sales say so, okay take this and i'll put it here see this will be the minimum value in this accessories with the minimum value then copy us 300 is the minimum value let's say i want to get the maximum value <coughs> function max this is exactly similar to your excel functions what we have in excel say excel functions and this almost they are similar max of sales say okay and we are left drag this and i'll put it here see this is the maximum value that is within this category let me remove this now what is the advantage of this let me take out this sub category now let's go and we'll take the category we'll take the same field which we have created this aggregated fields the function sum 
if I take this, see, this is getting aggregated based on the column or the field what I've used here. Let's take average and then put it here. See, here's the average. Now, if I remove this category and if I take, so you will take some other column, say segment, and I'll put it here. See, this will get aggregated based on the column what I'm taking here. That means these functions, what they are getting aggregated, it is dynamically changing when we change these columns accordingly. Now, let me go here and add region here. See, now what you see here is for central consumer is 280 is the average. Let me take this minimum, maximum, and minimum. See, now if I remove this segment, the values will change. See, see here, the values got changed. Now, suppose if I remove this region, only segment is there, then the values will be different. So, this aggregation, what is happening depending on the fields what I'm using here, right? Okay, then we have. Count. So what this count will do? Let me remove all this. I'll take this region and I'll put it here. Let me go here and I'll say function count count of region. Okay. I'll say so. So what this will do when I go here, take this and put it here. It says 2,323. That means the central is repeating those many times. East is repeating those many times. When I remove this region, and if you put, say, uh, we'll take the segment only, and I should put it here, see, 5191. Though I have used here count of region here, I'll be getting these values because it is repeated those many times. Say, for example, if you say region, uh, central, and consumer, and again, central is one. So this will give me the value so how many times the consumer is having this many regions. Fine. Let me take that region again. I'll take this region. And here, these many times it is repeating in the table. What I want here is, I have the state. Let me go here. Somewhere we have the state. Let's say state. I'll take the state and I'll put it here. If you check this, just observe this, the central and the state, whatever is there, see, it is repeating these many number of times. Let me remove this state. I want in central how many states are there. We can change this function or we'll add one more function here. Function count as the state. Say count state and I'll say okay let me drag and put it here so it's still I'm getting the same number of records because here the central is repeating those many number of times only if I'm taking the state also but what I want here is in central how many states are there in east how many states are there? that is unique values the distinct values to be counted now what I'll do is we'll go here and we'll have one function called as count d. What this count d will do is count d means count distinct. The count d of state. Say okay. Now let me take this and I'll put it here. See, I'm getting 13. The same thing if we take this count state and put it here. See, I'm getting 2323. But here it says 13. So that means count to D, what it will do is it will count the unique values or you can call it as count distinct. Okay. So these are the aggregated functions. What we have is sum, average, minimum, maximum, count and count D. Count D means it is distinct. And I'll just mention here distinct. That's it. Next, we have numeric functions numeric functions say for example i have this abs absolute absolute means it will convert your 
negative number to positive number. Let's go and check this. Create calculated field and say function apps. Just say apps of and say profit because in profit we have few negative numbers. I will say okay. Let me take the order ID and then I will take the profit. Can you see this? I have some negative numbers here. I will take this calculated field we just created, which we discussed saying that abs means it will convert your negative number to positive number. Let me take this and I will put it here. So this is my abs. If you go and check this, see, minus 6 is 6, minus 1 is 1. So scroll down, see, minus 31 is 31, minus 1 is 1. Everything is fine. Let's go on top. I'll show you an interesting thing. Can you see this? Minus 19 is 157. This was supposed to be plus 19, but here is not happening. The reason why it is not happening, I'll tell you. Here, this profit what I'm getting, this is aggregated values. But here, what apps I'm getting, this is getting aggregated after converting the values. So in this case, there might be that one value is minus, another value is plus, so that minus value is becoming plus and then it is getting added. But for me, what I need is, it should get calculated like this. That is, it should do the calculation, it should do the aggregation, and then it should apply the apps. So for this, what should I do? I'll go and I'll create one more function. Say function apps, I'll say aggregate. Same function I'll give you, I'll say abs of, but here I'll say sum of profit. See, I'm using this sum of profit. Profit, close bracket. So what will happen? First, it will aggregate, like what it is happening here. In this case, what's happening? It is doing the calculation and on that we are applying apps. Say okay. Now let me take this and if I put it here, see, now I'm getting the right result. See, apps aggregated. So it is a good practice that if you are doing any calculations like this, make sure that you use this aggregate functions. I'll show you more examples like this. This is apps. Next, say ceiling, floor, and round. These are used for rounding your values. Let's go back. Again, I'll show you some more interesting things. Let me remove all this. I'll take out all this. Let this order ID be like this. I'll take the sales value and I'll put it in. So, this is sales value. Let me format this data. Teams and we'll take some two decimals or three decimals. I'm just taking some decimal numbers here so that you can know the round up. I will say ceiling. Ceiling means it is to round up to the top level. Close this format. Say function. Ceiling of, I'll say sales, and say okay. So what this will do? It will round the values. Let me drag and I'll put it here. Just observe this. It says 378. That means 377.9, which is getting rounded off to the upper level. That is 378. Let's go and check this. Now can you see this? The 397.074, which is actually if it is getting rounded off to the higher level, it should be either say 698 or say 697, whatever. But here it says 699. That means it is jumping two numbers. Let's see another example. See 21.376. Here it is 23. This should be 22, but here it says 23. The reason is here 
the ceiling is applied to each row. See what's happening. Let me show you. So what will happen? There will be two ways what the calculation is applied. So in this data, see, let's go to this data. In this sales, in this sales. Yes, sales is here. See, the sales. So what will happen is, in the sales value, it says 262, and let's say these two are of same uh, category. So this will, uh, you know, round off one by one. All this will be rounded off, and then it will combine the data. That means it will apply the ceiling. That means it will take. Let's say for example, I have 28, and I have 28.5 or something, and I have some other value with. 18. Uh, say 3 so that will become some uh, you know uh, 42.8 or something when it is rounding off it is individually uh, uh, you know uh, applying the ceiling and then it is giving me the sum there that means in this case what it is doing is it is first applying the ceiling and then it is becoming aggregated but what i want is first it should aggregate on that it should apply the ceiling so what we'll do we we'll go here i'll Create one more function, say ceiling aggregate. So here I'll say ceiling of sum of sales. But this time what I'm doing, I'm trying to use aggregate values here directly. After that, I'll use the ceiling function. I'll say okay. Let me take this and I'll put it here. Now let's see the values. Can you see this? Here it says 22 because it is aggregating and then applying the ceiling. Previously, it was applying the ceiling and then aggregating. If you go here, see, we had checked one example here. It was that somewhere here we had uh, checked. Let's forgot which one. So, ah, yeah, here, yeah, this one. See, 697, it is going to 699, which was supposed to be 698. See, so likewise, that's what I was telling. So, this aggregate functions are very much useful with these kind of functions. Let's say floor. Floor means rounding off to the lower level. Let me remove this. Let this sales value be like this. Say go here. I'll say function. And then I'll say floor. Floor of. Now directly I'll go to this sum of sales because you understood the concept. Now let me take this floor and I'll put it here. See? It will around to the lowest level, say 21.3, and here 14.6. If it is ceiling, it will become 15. If it is floor, it will become 40. Right? So then we have this round. A round actually will round the decimal numbers to the number of decimal points I mentioned. Let's go here again. Here also try to give aggregate values function round. Round off, it lasts for the number. I'll say sum of sales, comma, I'll say round off to two decimal numbers. Say okay. Let me take this round and I'll put it here. Now, this one you can go here and you can use format and we'll say custom give two decimals. See, this will get rolled off to the second digit. So here it says 91.056. It is getting rounded off to 0 0.06. 0 0.06 here. See, so it says 0 0.928, 0 0.93. If you check this, see 0 0.620, it is still 0 0.62 only. That is, if the value of this third digit, if it is greater than 5, then that will be higher level. If it is less than 5, then it will be lower level. So that's what is happening here. That means Round will round your decimal points to the number of decimal points you have mentioned. That is this. In these three functions, square root or say power, so this is not much used, but still, I'll just show you how they work. I'll just copy this and I'll show you this is not much used, but again, if you want to use it, just try it. Say, 
this will find the square of this quantity let's say okay and let's take this order ID here let's move this down sales function and we'll take this function take this my full clear this will this will find the square of the quantity now you can just take this quantity and we'll put it nothing but the square of say 3 3 into 3 9 so 9 into 9 so likewise this one so you have to check this right then square root so finding the square root so again i'll not go in depth of this i'll just show you so here just paste it remove this we take the sales there are so many columns now sales and then we created the square root so here it will be the square root of this one okay then power so this is something like um, uh, the quantity and for that quantity to the power of three or whatever okay so these are you know that you can uh, just practice with these three functions i'll not go in depth of it if you want you can just understand this this is just to find the square root or the power of the value say i'll take this quantity and i'll put it here and i'll take this power See, to the power of 3 square right so these three functions i'll not go in depth just try to work on this this is square square root and power one more function i'll just explain this if conditions and then we'll end the session if condition condition functions are very much necessary when you want to find say some values based on conditions Let's go back and check. See, again, I'm telling you, always try to use this aggregate value so that we'll get the right results. Let's go here. It says sum of sales. Let me take this subcategory and I'll put it here. I will take this sales value and I'll put it here. What I want is, let me sort this. The values which are above 2000, let's say about 2000, it should mention as high. Above 1 lakh, it should be medium. Anything less than that should be low. Let's go here. Create calculated field and say function if. If. Then I'll say put sum of sales. Don't put only sales because say only sales will check individual row. But I want the aggregated uh, values. So here this actually is a sum of sales, right? I'll say sum of sales is greater than say 3 lakh or say 2 lakh. Then I'll go here, I'll say hi. Else if sum of sales is greater than I mention as one lakh. Then I'll say medium. Else I'll say low. No. Right? See, here I have a different value. Then I'll say end. Say if condition then the statement if this is not true then it will go to second condition if i don't have second condition then i can use something like this if else i have two conditions to be checked if these two conditions are not true then it will go to else statement i'll say okay now let me take this and i'll put it here see high medium low. this is if condition you can use this for calculations as well. 
say, for example, suppose, um, let me show you, I have this value. So if the value, we'll select this, we'll take this region to make it more simple and I'll take this sales. Let's say if the region is center, then we should have 10%. Say discount or whatever. If it is east, let's say 5%. If it is south, let's say 15%, then west will say 20%. Let's go here. I'll create one if statement. Say function if we calculate. If region equals, I'll mention it as center. Then else if region equals say east then copy this region and I'll replace it here copy this here I'll say else If it is east, then south, then else. Now here we'll put the calculation. I'll say sum of sales multiplied by here to mention 0.1. That means 10%. Let me copy this. Equal to 0.2. So 0.3. Else point four. You can change this calculation however you want. Now, okay, here these calculations will not happen. Okay, so uh, so one uh, one thing I want to discuss. See here, this aggregated uh, values now it will not calculate because Either we have to take a single values, the individual values. So let's not take this. So for that, uh, I'll tell you in the next session how you can take as a separate column, do the calculation and then do this. Um, I thought I'll just explain this. So this I'll tell you in the next session because there is one separate column you have to create and then you have to do this calculation. This if condition will not work in this situation. It's in this knowledge what we have. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Then. What we'll do is we'll see one more kind of if statement that is conditional statement that is case. So what we'll do, say I have this case, this is similar to your select case in your VBA. I'll say case and then if I take this, um, say what is this, uh, the value, if uh, we have some value to be checked in this if statement. So what I'll do, I'll say if region equals east, then something, then west, something. But I have one more way of using this, um, which is called as case. What this case will do is case and it will check the condition. And here it says when it is east, what should be the value? When it is central, what should be the value? When it is south, what should be the value? Okay, so let me just copy this and I'll put it here. Okay, I'll say function case. So here what's happening? Case. If it is taking the region. If this region is matching with east, then it should be E. The central it is C, south it is S, west it is W, and I'll say okay. Let me take this and if I put it here, see wherever it is central. So likewise, so you can use this <coughs> use this case for anything. So it can be a uh, region or say it can be category or whatever. So it will say case and it will check this condition, the value. And here we'll mention the conditions here. When it is east, what should happen? When it is central, what should happen? When it is south, what should happen? When west, what should happen? Okay. So it will go and match with this case. If any of these cases will match with this value, then that statement will be executed. If I'm using the same thing with if, then I'll say if region equals east, then if region equals. So previously we had tried to do some calculation, right? So there we used if region equals east then it should be E. If it is central, then C. So likewise, 
have to mention if else if else if else if instead of else if I can use this case and then I can use the values. Okay. 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 Right. So these are some of the functions what we have. Apart from this, we also have some more functions which is used for uh, say conditional formatting. So what I'll do is when you come to this conditional formatting, I'll show you some more examples. Along with that, we discuss some calculations. But also I'll explain how to use these calculations. So um, uh, that um, uh, say what is that that uh, discount whatever I was calculating that will not calculate here because it is because of the aggregated values will not work there. So that I'll tell you in the coming session by learning more other uh, you know techniques of working on these formulas. The next session when we learn about conditional functions uh, say conditional formatting then I'll tell you more other uh, advanced functions. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll stop here with all these functions what you have discussed.